Good morning! Let's continue with our lesson. For the comprehensive illustration, this is involving Ocampo and Associate CPAs. Our illustrative example since Chapter 5 will be going to a separate sheet. Okay class, so ito yung mga binigay na adjustment data. Sampo for our Chapter 6 in the book that we are using. And this illustration involves Ocampo and Associates the illustrative problem we used in journalizing in chapter 5 and we'll be using it here in chapter 6 for adjusting entries. We'll still be using it in chapter 7 for the worksheet. So talagang nag accumulate yung ating ginagawa. Okay? The first adjustment data that is given. Number 1. As of June 30, 2020, 4,000 of the office supplies remained unused. Ano tinutukoy dito sa adjustment data na to? Office supplies. So kailangan titingin ka dun sa transaction involving office supplies. Ano ba yung transaction na nakikita mo dun sa ating chapter 5? Please listen carefully. Chapter Chapter 5, Involving Office Supplies. Anong transaction yun? Yung Adjustment Data Class, this will not be given in chronological order. So, kailangan hahanapin mo yung transaction related. So, sabi dito, Office Supplies. Anong transaction yun? It is transaction number 6. June 6, I mean. Okay? Doon sa ating Chapter 5. Ano ba nangyari nung June 6? Ang sabi, Mr. Ocampo acquired office supplies from Limpan. Ayan, office supplies from Limpan Commercial Work. 7,000 issuing a promissory note due in 15 days. Paano natin ginornalize yun doon sa chapter 5 natin? How was it recorded? It was recorded this way. Ang sabi natin, you can check your notes. Sabi natin, debit office supplies 7,000. Credit notes payable limpan 7,000. Yun yung sinabi natin dito. So, as so of June 30, sinasabi ng adjustment data na 4,000 of the office supplies ay Use. Take note, you have already debited office supplies originally for 7,000. Ngayon, ang sinasabi, 4,000 na lang daw ang hindi pa nagagamit. So, anong implikasyon nun? Ibig sabihin, kung 7 yan dati at ngayon 4 na lang ang tira, 3,000 therefore ang nagamit. Question, again, what was the method used? Eto na, okay? Kung gaano mo kakabisado yung A1, 2, 3, 4 mo at saka B1, B2. Ano ang involved dito? Is it A1, 2, 3, 4, B1, B2? It is A3, correct? It is prepayment of expenses, office supplies. Okay, so kung A3 ito, ano yung methods available? Sana naaalala mo yung discussions natin. Ano? The methods available are asset method or expense method. So tanong, originally in acquire mo 7,000, ngayon sinasabi 4,000 na lang. Anong method ang ginamit dito? It is obviously the asset method. Kasi makikita mo, nakadebit siya sa office supplies. So now, to correct this, how do you correct this? How do you adjust this? I should say, the office supplies is overstated sa kadahilanan na 7 pang nakalagay dyan, supposed to be 4 na lang. So the adjusting journal entry must be, ang credit mo ay office supplies. Tama ba? Babawasan mo ng 3,000. Correct. And the debit must be to recognize expense. So that is office supplies expense. And that must be debited. This is your adjusting journal entry entry on June 30. Okay? That is for June 30. Next, the office equipment is estimated to have a useful life of 5 years and 1,500 of the residual value at the end of its useful life is expected. This should be depreciated for one full month. One month lang ang hinihingi niyang depreciation. So, one month depreciation. So, ano ang related na transaction dito? What is the related transaction for number 2? It is the transaction on June 5 sabi, Mr. Ocampo acquired office equipment on account from Dagupan Enterprise. That is 52,500. Okay? Office equipment. Tinutukoy dito. Office equipment na tinutukoy sa adjustment data. How was it originally recorded in Chapter 5? It was recorded as debit, office equipment, credit accounts payable for 52,500. So, depreciation for one month would be debit, depreciation 
depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. So, kung mapapansin mo dito, cost following the straight line method, minus the scrap or the residual value divided by 5 years, makukuha mo yung, yung annual, times 1 over 12, kasi 1 month lang yung hinihingi. So, 850 must be the amount. This is your adjusting journal entry. Next, number 3. The automobile can be used by the enterprise for 10 years after which this can be sold at its scrap value for 10,000. This should be depreciated for the whole month of June. Ano ang transaction involved dito? Automobile ang tinutukoy. It is transaction June 8. Sabi, bought a second-hand automobile for business use from Dagupan Auto Center, issuing a two-year promissory note for 250000 bearing 12% interest rate, and dated June 9, 2020. How was it journalized? Debit automobile, 250000 Credit, notes payable, Dagupan Auto Center, 250000 50,000. Ang hinihingi naman dito, depreciation also for the whole month of June. So, anong ating adjusting entry? So, same lang kanina dito, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation, this time for automobile naman. Cost of 250,000 minus 10,000 divided by 10 years, that is the useful life of the asset, 10 years, okay, times 1 over 12 ulit kasi 1 month lang ang hinihingi. So, that is 2,000. Number four, one third of the retainer's fee collected in June. 30 is considered earned as of today. Ano ang related na transaction dito sa tinutukoy ng number 4 adjustment data? It is what happened on June 30. Sinabi naman, collected in June 30. Nakalagay dito. So, nung June 30, nangolekta ng 1 month retainer's fee 30,000. Okay? Pero lumalabas, 1 third na daw ang na-earn doon. How was this recorded ba? Ito, ito. Itong June 30 na to. How was it recorded in chapter 5? It was recorded by by debit cash on hand 30,000 credit professional income 30,000 tanong ko sa iyo anong adjustment classification to is it a 1 2 3 4 or b 1 b 2 answer it is a Four, tama? Pre-collection of income. So, to recall, makikita mo dito. I would have to show you. Ayan, no? A4. Income collected in advance. Kung A4 yan, anong method ang available? Naalala mo? It may be the liability method or the income method. Next question. Anong method ang ginamit dito? You must learn to read between the lines. Hindi sasabihin kung anong method ang ginamit mo. But based on the journal entry made in chapter 5, it was originally recorded using the income method. Dignan mo, it was not recognized as liability. It was credited to an income account. Therefore, income method was used. So, how do you adjust this? Nung June 30, ang sabi mo, ah, lahat tong 30,000 ay income na. Yun yung sabi mo. Pero lumalabas, according to the adjustment data, one-third pa lang pala ang na-earn. So, sobra yung nirecord mo na 30,000. Sobra yung 30,000. So, babawasan mo. Tama. Paano mo bawasan ang professional income? It must be debit. Professional income. Magkano babawasan mo? E, eh, one-third pa lang pala dapat ito eh. So, babawasan mo siya na two-thirds. So, 20,000. Anong credit mo? Credit? You must credit the liability account to recognize liability. An earned professional income also for 20,000. This is the adjusting journal entry for the fourth adjustment data. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we derive satisfaction to some extent from the interaction with students. Yung mga simpleng pagtawa mo sa mga jokes namin, they mean something to us. They make us happy. But teaching in front of the camera is a different thing. We don't even know if you're there. We don't even know if you're listening. So a simple like dun sa ating video, or a simple present sir, nandito po kami nakikinig, we are watching sir, will inspire us. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we know that you are there. But teaching in front of the camera, is not merely sharing our content. It means sharing our time, our devotion, and above all, our passion. So, yung simpleng pag-subscribe mo sa amin, it lets us know that you are there and we are here to continue what we are doing. So, ngayon pa lang, nagpapasalamat na kami. Diyan sa yung subscription, uh, it inspires us. It, since it inspires me to wake up every morning, prepare discussion materials, and continue what I am doing. So, thank you so much. Please continue sharing and liking and subscribing. Thank you. Halfway through. Number 5. Two-thirds of the insurance premium has expired as of June 30. Anong transaction ang involved dito? The transaction that occurred on June 10. 
Okay, insurance ang tinutukoy. Nung June 10, ano sabi natin? Paid 3,000 cash for one month insurance premium covering June 11 to July 10, 2020. So, lumalabas daw, two-thirds na ang nag-expire. How did we actually journalize this in Chapter 5? Ganito natin siya journalize, di ba? Debit, insurance, expense. Credit, cash on hand, 3,000. That was our original journal entry. So, ano to? A1, 2, 3, 4, B1, B2. Correct. A3. Prepayment of expenses. Eh, no? Expiration of prepayment of expenses. It is A3. So, if it is A3, anong method ang ginamit? It is the expense method. Not the asset method. Kung asset method yan, dapat ang debit niya, hindi insurance expense. Dapat prepaid insurance. Ayan. You must learn to read between the lines. So, how do we correct this? Nirecognize niya ng buong buo. Lahat daw yung 3,000 expense na. Eh, sinasabi sa adjustment data, hindi. Two-thirds lang dyan ang nag-expire. Ibig sabihin, yung one-third ay asset pa. Oh, how do we correct that? How do we adjust that? Debit? O oh, sige, gusto mo unahin yung credit. But the correct way, unahin dapat pati yung debit. But since insurance expense yung nandito, sabi mo sobra. So, babawasan. So, paano ba siya bawasan? Credit mo yung insurance expense. Lang how much? Uh, the one-third kasi two-third pa lang dapat yung insurance na nagamit. And the two th and the one-third must be recognized as an asset. So, that is prepaid insurance. Also, 1,000 in amount. Okay? This is the adjustment. Debit prepaid insurance. Credit insurance expense. 1,000. Number six. 450 pesos is considered prepaid taxes. Taxes ang tinutukoy. Ano ka yung transaction ang involved dito? This is the transaction occurring June 7. Itignan mo yung journal, yung mga transactions natin sa, sa chapter 5. Paid business taxes to the city treasurer for cash, 5,400. How was this journalized in chapter 5? It was journalized as follows. Debit, taxes and licenses expense, 5,400. Credit, cash on hand, 5,400. A1, 2, 3, 4, B1, B2. A3 prepayment of expenses. If it is A3, what method? Asset method or expense method? Answer, expense method. Expense account title yung nakadebit o oh. taxes and licenses. Expense. How do you correct this? O ba? Sinas sinasabi dito na hindi daw lahat ng 5-4 ay expense ng tulad ng sinabi mo originally. Kasi 450,000 is considered unused prepaid taxes. Okay. So, sobra ito. Sabi mo, expense lahat, hindi pa naman pala. 450 pala dyan ay hindi pa nagagamit. So, how do we adjust? Babawasan mo dapat ito. Tama? Paano mo bawasan yan? E di credit mo siya. Taxes and licenses expense. Amount? 450 pesos. Ano debit mo? E natural, prepaid taxes and licenses. Debit for the same amount. This is the adjustment for this particular adjustment data. Debit prepaid taxes and licenses. Credit taxes and licenses expense. Number 7. The rent paid is for one year. Ano kayang transaction ang involved dito sa number 7? It is the transaction occurring June 9. Paid office rent for one year to Avara Bar Buildings issuing a check. Check yung ginamit pang bayad. 48,000. The rent covers the period June 1, 2020 to May 31, 2021. How was this journalized in Chapter 5? It was journalized. Debit rent expense, 48,000. Credit cash in bank, kasi check eh, 48,000. So question, A1, 2, 3, 4, B1, B2. Answer, A3. Prepayment of expenses. So, kung A3 yan, ano method ginamit? Asset method or expense method? Answer, expense method. Rent expense. So, nung June 1, kababayad mo pa lang, nirecognize mo na ng buo as expense yung buong 48,000. E good for one year pala yun. Nung June 1 yun. June 1 pa lang, sabi mo, ala, to expense na. So, ngayon, June 30, after one month, tama ba na 48,000 ng expense? That is wrong. Sabi mo, lahat dun expense na. E sa totoo pa, one month pa lang ang nagagamit out of 12 months. So, sobrang sobra yung rent expense mo na 40. So, babawasan mo yung rent expense. Ilan ang ibabawas mo? Sabi mo, 12 out of 12 expense na. E, 1 out of 12 lang pala. So, sobra ka ng 11 over 12. That is 11 over 12 times 48,000. 44,000. And you must recognize yung hindi pa nagagamit na portion. Kaya debit prepaid rent. Also, for the same amount, 44,000. This is the adjustment 
adjustment for number 7. Number 8. Accrued salary sa sub June 30 amounts to 2,700 pesos. Ignore withholding taxes, SSS, and PhilHealth in the adjustment. Eto class, wala siyang involved na transaction because this is merely accrual of expense. So ano to? Is this B1? Uh, is this A1234? B1, B2? Nasabi ko na yung sagot. Okay? B1. Accrual of expense. Ayan. Tawag dun Freudian sleep. Ayan. Nadulas ako. B1, accrual of expense. How was it originally journalized? Siyempre, wala. Walang related transaction eh. Doon sa ating chapter 5. So, ang meron lang tayo dito would be the adjustment. Simply, it would be debit salaries expense, 27. Credit accrued salaries payable, 2,700. That is for number 8. Okay, number 9. Interest on the note payable to the Gupan Auto Center should be accrued use 360 days. Yun ang sabi. So, ano bang related na transaction dito sa number 9? It is the transaction occurring June 8. Yung sabi, bought a second-hand automobile for business use from the Gupan Auto Center, issuing a two-year promissory note, 250,000, 12% interest rate, dated June 9, 2020. How was this journalized? It was journalized as follows. Debit automobile 250,000. Credit notes payable Dagupan Auto Center 250,000. So, paano natin to i-adjust? This is accrual of expense. Again, kasi uh, nag-incur tayo ng interest expense although it is not yet paid because of the notes payable and it must be adjusted as follows. Debit interest expense 1,750. Credit accrued interest payable. Bakit? It is June 9 nung na-acquire. So, ilang days bago mag-June 30? 21 days out of 360 days. So, principal P times rate times time T, P, R, T. Okay? The time is 21 days over 360 days. So, that is 1,750 pesos. Adjustment for number 9. Okay? Last one, number 10. 2% of the total receivables is considered uncollectible. So class, ano to? A1, 2, 3, 4, B1, B2. Receivables ang tinutukoy. It is provision of allowance. Ito ay A1. Percent of accounts receivable, yung method na ginamit niya. So what is the related transaction? That which occurred June 9. Build the following clients for audit work performed. Alpha, beta, cut gas. How was it journalized? Nung binil natin, debit accounts receivable, alpha company 22,000, beta trading accounts receivable, 30,000, AR accounts receivable, cut gas company 15,000, credit professional income, 67,000. What is the adjusting journal entry? The adjustment would be debit, doubtful accounts expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts, 2% of the 67,000. 1,340. Since chapter 5, kung paano sila generalize originally, up to chapter 6, when there were adjustment data pala, and in chapter 6 also, we showed how they would be adjusted. Okay class, so that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. Uh, so, ganun-ganun lang class. A few minutes of your time every day, imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos pa bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So with that, see you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson.